Good evening once again, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, before my homily, I have a message to share. When good things happen to us, we immediately want to share with those who are very dear to us. And I consider you all are the parishioners of Our Lady of Joy as my family. On Wednesday, July the 21st, 2021, I got my permanent resident card, also known as green card, from the U.S. Immigration Office. Thank you. I've been working on this for the past two years. I truly believe it's worth the wait. I'm very proud to be a permanent resident of the United States for the next 10 years. I'm truly grateful to all of you for your financial support in facilitating the process. You donated generously towards the sale of my book, Thy Kingdom Come, and the proceeds paid for my green card. Please know that I, hold, I will always hold you and your families dear deep in my heart and prayers. Thank you very much and God bless you. This weekend, we begin a five week stretch of meditation on John's Gospel chapter six, a kind of summer Eucharist fest that comes around every three years. The rationale for this is that we are in year B of the lectionary, which covers the second gospel, the gospel of Mark. Now, Mark is the shortest of the gospels. So in order to fill it out, the church inserts John's gospel chapter six into the, the same event, the feeding of the 5,000. John's account, however, is much longer and includes a long discourse on the theme, Bread of Life, after recounting the miracle itself. John doesn't have its own lectionary circuit, but rather most of the fourth gospel is read during Advent, Christmas, Lent, and Easter or other significant feast days. John's Gospel chapter six, however, doesn't fit naturally into either the Advent Christmas circle or the Lent Easter Pentecost circle. So the church shoehorns it into the middle of ordinary time in year B. So what we're going to do to get this Sunday and the next four following Sundays is a survey of key Eucharistic types from the Old Testament in our first reading, paired with each successive unit of John's Gospel, chapter 6, in the Gospel for these coming Sundays. What I intend to do during the next four following Sundays is to explain an aspect of the Eucharist or Mass that ties in with the readings for that particular Sunday. So what I'm trying to say is that for the next four Sundays, we will be reading from John's Gospel chapter six. It's a long discourse on the bread of life. And I will use the opportunity to teach about the Eucharist, to teach about Mass. In today's first reading, we heard that a man came from ba Baal Shalisha, bringing to Elisha, the man of God, <coughs> 20 barley loaves made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the air. In the gospel, we heard too that the disciples got five barley loaves and two fish from a boy and presented them to Jesus. These two events prefigure the offertory part of the Mass. In normal circumstance, at every Sunday liturgy, we notice that after the prayer of the faithful, two or three persons are chosen from the congregation to process with the bread and wine and other gifts like the collection, 
and present them to the priest at the foot of the altar. This is to signify the divine exchange that happens at every Mass. We present to God all that is ours, the fruits of our labor, the collection, our joy, our sorrows, our desires, our weakness, and above all, our will. And God, on the, on the, on the other hand, takes all that is ours and gives us what is his. He gives us his love, his mercy, his grace, his joy, his peace, his presence, and his very self in the Eucharist. So every time we come to Mass, we come with the intention to offer something to God. The unfortunate thing is, we are only used to coming to Mass with an intention or petition. But our participation at Mass involves more than that. It requires that, like Jesus, we come to every Mass to offer ourselves to the Father. That's the big deal. That's the primary intention that every Catholic comes to Mass with. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, St. Paul says, So then, my friends, because of God's mercy to us, I appeal to you, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service and pleasing to him. This is the true worship that you should offer. The Mass truly makes sense when we are conscious of the fact that we are here to offer ourselves to the Father in imitation of Christ. In doing so, we are participating in Christ's self given to the Father from all eternity. In doing so, we are participating in the obedience of the Son to the Father. In doing so, we are learning to die to the self. In doing so, we are imitating Jesus by offering our lives to give glory to the Father. You see, every Mass we attend is supposed to be a renewal of our commitment to say with Jesus, into your hands, Father, I commend my spirit. The Mass is first and foremost a total surrender to the Father's will before it is communion. It is a sacrifice before it is a consummation. I believe changes in the liturgy and the desire to make the liturgy more lively has made us to forget this most important aspect of the Mass. If we don't grow in our capacity to surrender to the Father's will, our participation in communion will bear less fruit and we will lack real fortitude to bear the trials of life. The challenge, dear brothers and sisters, is to be always conscious each time we attend Mass that we have come to learn how to surrender to the Father's will. Authentic participation at Mass always begins with a desire to grow in our surrender to the Father's will. <clears throat>